Welcome to the Intentional Mamas Podcast. Life doesn't have to be static. This is wisdom from God's word from the heart of another mom to help you guide your family into real, intentional, spiritual growth. Now, here's your host, pastor, spiritual coach, and author, Kate Richter. Hello! Welcome to Intentional Mama. I am Pastor Kate. And I'm coming to you from RootBible.com. And it is there that we have been mandated to reach every generation with the truth by studying the scriptures. And it is there that we have live interactive classes for every age for free. So listen, there's a lot of social media platforms that have gone crazy and they want nothing to do with it the Lord, the Bible, or Jesus, and there is a world gone crazy that wants nothing to do with a country I can't even say, or the people of that country, or I'll get flagged or taken down. If you don't think that it's important to know the Word of God more today than ever, it's time to wake up, and our kids must also. Doesn't mean they need to know the details of what's going on in the world, They need to know the details of the word and what they've been equipped with by the spirit and the love of God so that they can operate in victory that's been provided for them by Christ Jesus. It's kind of a big deal. So if you're watching on social media, I'm trying to look through the five different platforms, put where you're listening from. Um, I took Facebook off my phone, so I can't even check it here. Uh, I want nothing to do with social media apart from ministry. Although I love all the people out there, I want to spend more time in relationship and less time on social media, except to discuss with you the things of God. So Pennsylvania, California, representing Texas. Hello. Oh, hi, Erica. Oh, it's been a while. Yeah, I'm glad you're there. So if you're seeing me, that's also a miracle. We've been shadow banned uh, in a whole new uh, way, um, flagged for things. So listen, join us over on Rumble. That's really pretty important, okay? Um, Join us at rootbible.com. Right now, there's people in class uh, face-to-face. So when I leave social media, we will talk about real things going on in our homes and answer questions biblically on what to do in those situations. So I'll teach here, then we'll go over there so you can register free at rootbible.com, and that's in the tools of the trade area. We have new classes being posted soon, including survival classes, finance classes, all sorts of classes, and most of them are free. Ours, Root Bibles, all free. In January, we have starting the reboot. Guys, I don't even have a book in here because we've shipped them all out. <laughs> i got to bring a new box in. Uh, the root book, change your life. Tired of living the status quo. Tired of your family looking like the rest of the world, even though you attend church. It's not your heart's desire. You want everything God has for you, but you're just not sure how to put the two together. going to help you get the root book and then join the root reboot in January. When you do, you get the book free. So just join it. You basically are giving it away, but it's an hour a day during the weekday to grow into all Christ has created for you. Remember, he knew you before the womb. You are a spirit. You existed before your body. He knows you. He has plans he planned for you. It's important to get in touch with those plans, but it doesn't happen on accident. So go to rootbible.com slash reboot, join it. You won't regret it. If, if you join it and you get to the end, I will refund you. If you go to every class, I will refund you if it did not catapult you into the destiny and purpose God has for you, an understanding of who you are in Christ and change how you approach every day. I'll refund you. It's how much we believe in it. We're only... We're not even, what is it, $29, I think. You register and get the book shipped to you free. I just want to see the body of Christ know who they are. All right? 
Okay, when we teach these classes, it's the same classes that the kids, youth, uh, and um, prayer class have been learning all week long. So you are learning what your kids are learning and then how to make it real. Maybe you don't have kids. Right now you're learning how to make it real influentially with anybody that is in your sphere of influence. So that means like who, who around me needs what God has put in me and destined me for? Well, that's what you are in this class for, how to make it real. Don't get stuck just having to fix yourself. God made you the righteousness of him in Christ Jesus. You're righteous. Just live each day with him. Grow with him. But don't get stuck in the mindset that you got to fix yourself. That's a lie. God is in you. He's giving everything you need for a life of godliness. It's just about surrendering and transforming. He does the fixing. He does the pulling of the weeds as you surrender and transform. But we got to put the work in. we got to put the word in so that we can walk it on in faith. It's impossible to put faith into anything that we don't first know, which is why allowing just anything to come into our homes, on our TV, on our radio, on our devices is so dangerous because as soon as you know something, even if that something is not true, the temptation to put faith in it is now there. What don't you want your kids putting their faith in? Well, don't let it in via technology. Teach them why not. Okay, human reasoning gets in the way of faith in God's word all the time. And we don't want that, which is why we teach God's word. All right, so let's get started. Our main verse for this entire semester was 1 Corinthians 14.1. Okay, this is the church at Corinth. Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. What? Okay, let's look over in 14, um, in the Amplified Version. Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest, and earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments. I like that much better, because he has endowed us with these abilities by the Spirit. It's not just like, uh, you get a gift and you get a gift. Especially that you may prophesy. Or know the divine will and purpose inspired preaching and teaching by God. See, he is literally giving instruction to what Paul himself calls a very carnal church. To change their destiny by doing just that. And then right after that, he goes into breaking that down. What does it look like that same spirit is working in you, in your children, in your husband, in your home, in your spouse, in your neighbors? What, what does it look like? Well, it looks like words of knowledge and words of wisdom and speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, and knowing God's heavenly plan while the rest of the world does not, while operating in gifts of healing and bringing about miracles by the hand of the Father through his spirit, because you know to place your expectancy on those endowments. You earnestly desire to demonstrate love the way that Jesus did. And that was setting the captives free, healing the sick, casting out demons. That's love. That's how love through Jesus, who is the word, portrayed himself on earth. He gave truth. He he exposed lies, he healed and delivered. We sometimes make it too complicated, don't we? So let's turn over to Mark 16, 15, 18. This is how the word of God, Jesus made flesh, the word, demonstrated love by the Holy Spirit so that he could show what the Father looks like. That's how the rules go. Not to be confused as if they're separate entities, and yet they are all in one. The Father building up the Son, the Son building up the Father, the Holy Spirit revealing the Son. See how that works? Okay. Mark 16, 15 through 18. Why do I love Mark? Mark 
really doesn't hold back on his expectancy of the supernatural manifestations um, that worked through Christ. And remember, when you're reading a lot of these things, this is an account of what happened within 24-hour period, 48-hour period. This was the normal going-ons of the disciples walking with Christ. This is our every day. Okay, that's extreme. That's super spiritual. No. If he's going to even write the most carnal church about the gifts or endowment of the spirit that they are to be operating in, desiring and surrendering to so that the Holy Spirit may reveal Christ and by that the love of the Father demonstrated, why wouldn't we? Okay. Mark 16, 15, let's read it together. I'm going to read it in, oh goodness, my translations. I'm going to read it in Amplified Classic. And he said to them, go into all the world. Let me set the stage here for you. This is him after he has risen from the dead. I don't want people to be confused here. This isn't him putting them on assignment while he was still on earth, sharing a little bit of that one and same spirit with them while um, he was still here doing his earthly walk in the flesh. This is after he has risen from the dead and he's come back to give the charge of now that he's risen from the dead, he'll go to the father, ask him to send his spirit. And this is what you'll do to show the love of the Father and to reveal Christ as Lord, you'll do the same things I did. And so we're going to go up a little bit farther. Let me start in 14. After he appeared to the eleven, as they reclined at the table, he reproved and reproached them for their unbelief. I could go a long way here. But, you know, we're getting ready to do 21 days of fasting come in January. Why do we fast? Not to overcome the enemy. He's already overcome. Not to defeat the evil one. He's overcome spiritual principalities and powers in high places. We have authority over them. But when it seems like we don't, unbelief is in the way. And what does fasting and prayer take care of? Unbelief. So we want to get the flesh under that we're not limiting what God has made available to us. So they're reclining there at the table, unbelief or their lack of faith, which is impossible. I don't like this translation because he's dealt us all the faith that we need. Faith is here, unbelief is here, which is why we must renew our minds. But fasting and prayer starts to um, put that flesh on the altar so that unbelief can't get in the way of faith. Okay? And their hardness of heart, because they had refused to believe those who had seen him and looked at him attentively after he had risen from death. So notice. He's like rebuking them here, but he still loves them. There's nothing limited that uh, like, oh, now I've got to take away from you the things that uh, the abilities or the endowments. I, uh, you're not going to be able to represent me now. No, he's telling them just get unbelief out of the way. Nothing's changed. I still love you. You're still able to do things and you're still commissioned to do good things by my hand of the spirit, by my leading as an example and by the power of the father. So. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach, publish openly the good news, which is known as the gospel. What is that? That Christ came to set us free from the powers of the air, the prince of this world, to every creature of the whole human race. How many races? One. He who believes, who adheres to and trusts in, relies on the gospel, and him who it sets forth and is baptized. It's important. Got to be baptized. Water and spirit, the Bible says, will be saved from the penalty of eternal death. But he who does not believe, who does not adhere to and trust and rely on the gospel of him who set forth, will be condemned. That's clear. There's one way. Believe and be baptized. And these attesting signs, how will you know? How will they know? How will they know? Here's the attesting signs. Will accompany those who believe in my name. So now he's afforded us the authority of his name. We have the power of the spirit 
And because we do, we need to shelf unbelief, whether that's through fasting, whether that's through transforming our mind through the study of the word of God, however, for, whether it's through prayer, we shelf unbelief. We take every thought captive that doesn't align with what he says right here, and we move forward in faith. And these attesting signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. They will pick up serpent, serpents, and even if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will get well. After he had spoken to him, he was taken up into heaven and seated or sat down at the right hand of God. He says, here it is. We've been running this race. My earthly portion is done. Here is the official baton. Goodbye. You don't need me anymore. You need the Holy Spirit. You have everything that you need to do what I've just instructed you to do. Kate, it's impossible. There's no way. Yes, way. That's unbelief. That's reasoning. That's, um, I'm going by my five senses alone that says that's impossible. Right? Oh, don't test it. Don't go grab a snake or something. But know that you have authority over nature that bows to the Father in the name of Jesus. Know that you have authority over the food in your ground and in your home. Know that you have the very same power that resided in Christ and now also have the right to use his name because you have received in faith the gospel and been baptized. You now do these things. He told you, you already rebuked you. Don't have unbelief in these things. Do these things. And so what they do? And they preached everywhere while the Lord kept working with them and confirming the message by the attesting signs and miracles that closely accompanied it. Just immediate obedience. Wow. Wow. So, how are you going to do it? In and of yourself? No. Boast about how amazing you are? No. Be the best preacher speaker? No. In fact, Paul, <laughs> his letters would be forceful, and they're like, man, when he speaks, though, it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that's all just human reasoning. Yes, man judges by the flesh, so do your best. Look your best. Honor God with your appearance, with how you um, represent the king naturally also. But that is not the key to releasing spiritual things. Not how well you preach, not how well you dress, not where you're from, not whose family you are, not how much money you have in the bank. No. It's having faith in what he said. Preach everywhere. These signs will follow you, attesting that you are a believer that's been baptized. What? It's not just for the apostles. No. Find me the scripture between this scripture and Revelation that says, and now the Holy Spirit is left and no longer is this which he has charged us with applicable when he got taken up to heaven and seated at the right hand of God. It was just until those people died. One scripture. Bring it to me. No. Why would they go and preach everywhere with signs following? Why would he teach them, even when he was on earth, it was the 12, the 72, so he taught them to multiply themselves. Guys, it's for today. It's not so we can live a comfortable American life. He will bless us. He will overwhelm us. He will love us well. We don't have to do it. We have to do that. We have to get our focus on kingdom treasures truly, which is people. How do we show the love of the Father to people? Just like Christ did. By the working of the Spirit, healing the sick, setting the captives free. Same way. We use the word of God, which he has elevated even above his name, the Father. Because remember, when the Father revealed himself, he revealed himself in, in names. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, right? Well, now his word is above those where he exposed who he was and his characteristics by his name. Well, now his word is elevated above that because his word is all of those things in us. Every name 
that God named himself, revealing his characteristic to us, his kids who he created in his image, he now has made available to us in his word, who is Christ Jesus. Okay, it's so spiritual. Can't we talk a little bit like about, you know, making bread? Yes, I'd love to talk about making bread. I'm learning how to do sourdough better. We could talk about that stuff. We could talk about it while we're doing sourdough together. But if we don't get these things down, our sourdough will burn up before the Lord too. It's about knowing these truths so we can challenge wrong thinking in our homes, our families, our spouses, now ourselves. We can live above reproach, trusting the word, knowing that when the spirit is leading to do something, he has endowed me with the ability to do it. Just like he did Christ Jesus, just like he did the apostles. Knowing that I don't live a mere normal human life. Guys, stir it up. You need to be talking to your kids this way. New creation living isn't so that we could just believe in salvation and not do anything else. Does he love us just the same? Yeah. But what we have Everything available to us, including a mandate, the seated Christ who said, use my name. I'll have the Father ask him to send his Holy Spirit, and you'll show the Father's love just as I did. And then we live a normal life, ignoring that, except on Sunday. I know, no one wakes up and thinks that. I'm going to ignore the Lord. Goodbye. No. But sometimes we just don't know what to believe and we're so overcome with the cares of this world and our five senses that we don't stop long enough to let the word truly be bread, sustenance to us. That's why fasting and prayer undoes the flesh, gets rid of unbelief, because now I'm truly relying on the word and the Lord to reveal truth, not my feelings and emotions, not my experiences. The word, releasing, surrendering, to the Father by his spirit. Eek. Okay. So we went over the three tools in the last classes. If you've missed it, you should go back and listen to them. I'm terrible about uploading them. So if you can't find it, let us know. If you're listening to the podcast afterwards, if there's one missing, just reach out. We do this all ourselves. Sometimes um, late at night, we fall asleep at the computer and forget if we even did one. So... Reach out and let us know. But we've gone over the three tools that say something. That's tongues, interpretation, and tongues, and prophecy. We've gone through the three tools that know something. That's the endowment of the word of knowledge, the endowment of the word of wisdom, and one other that I can't remember. Hold on. <laughs> We've got prophecy, we've got speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, we've got word of wisdom, word of knowledge. And I don't know what the word is. You guys gotta tell me. Which one did my missing? That's hilarious. Let's read our scripture. For the one is given the wisdom through the spirit, and to another the word according to the same spirit. You're welcome. To another, faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another effecting of miracles by the same spirit, and another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits. That's it, distinguishing of spirits. We went over that first. I should remember that because nothing you go forward doing do you want to do without first identifying by what spirit it's on. Is it the one and same spirit or is it something else? Is it flesh? Is it the evil spirit? Various kinds of tongues and another interpretation of tongues, but one in the same spirit, distributing as he wills. Who wills? The Holy Spirit wills. Does the Holy Spirit have the same desires as the Father? Yes, he does. The Spirit is straight from the Father. And so as he wills, what's he will? Set the captives free, heal the sick, deliver those who are oppressed. Same will. So don't get hung up on that word. The Holy Spirit wills to work through you, okay? So what's left? Gifts of faith, gifts of healing, and working of miracles. These are the ones that do something. You guys should have heard my junior high class this week. They knocked it out of the park. They want to know this stuff. Watch out. The next generation is just going to run us over. 
They're going to go, what were you doing? Do you have the same word I have? What did you do with your faith? Because they are fired up. They're ready. They're taking on the world. My kids rush in to pray for people and see miraculous things instantly. They don't have the spirit of fear in the areas where God has shown them. They have his name, authority, and his spirit to tread on serpents, demons, destruction. Okay? So, Mark 7, 16, 17 through 18 again. Remember, the very end of it in 18. They will lay hands on the sick and they might recover. Could recover. Let's look that up. Let's look it up in our Strong's. If you don't have a Strong's concordance, it better get on your Christmas list right now. Strong's concordance. All right? Let's look it up. Mark, which do I have? No, it's out in my study area. Mark 16. I'm just going to go 18. In Greek. Okay? You can also do it in BibleHub.com. So let's see if you can see this. Okay, so it's going to break down every single word in the scripture by the Greek. Okay, why do I want that? Because man is involved in translating. And the Holy Spirit will get to the Greek source and reveal something to you that might have been a hang-up just because the translator used a word that you got hung up on. Like, as he will. And you're like, oh, so he must not have willed. We know the will of the Father is revealed in the word. What's the Spirit sent to do? Uh, reveal the word. <laughs> and work through us the endowments that help the word be revealed to others. The truth. The truth that God loves us and wants us healed, whole, and delivered. Okay? What's that word? Sozo. We'll get to that in just a minute. So it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So let's look at that, shall we? The Greek says, they shall lay hands upon sick. They will get well. That's the translation without any English words filling in. Which means they will recover and be made well. The word is kalos, 2573, in your Greek. And they will what? Recover and be made well. Wait a minute, isn't that spiritually? Well, of course it is, because he does both. But it's also physically. It's also solically. Notice there's a healing process that takes place. The God is not limited by just healing the flesh or just healing uh, the connection between him in the spiritual realm or just healing the soul through his word. He's not limited. So we've got to stop saying, yeah, but cancer. Yeah, but arthritis. No, we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover and be made well. By your hands? No. By the hands that are behind your hands. This is just flesh. This is just body. No, it's by the power released through the Holy Spirit. They will recover. Kalos. Anyone. A little bit further up. Anyone who believes in Jesus. Not just the pastor. Now, I love because actually this gets addressed later. If because of lack of faith, people are not operating in this. Like Paul writing to the church and saying, guys. This is how the Holy Spirit flows. So, you know, surrender. This should be happening normally. Okay, so if they come up, well, then you go to the elders. They will anoint you with oil and the prayer of faith will what? Make them whole. Whole. Spirit, soul, and body. God addresses spirit, soul, and body throughout the word. He's made us in his image. He does not just want to heal one part. We've got to stop human reasoning, limiting that he wants us to be well in heaven. That he wants us to be well in our spirit. Okay, what? 
What kind of good father would be like, I want my kiddo to have the healthiest legs in the world, but their heart, you know, genetically, mm, mm. no, no. If you know how to give good gifts unto your children and you are a man, man, got this selfishness that can try to rise up when we don't take authority over it. Man, not God. How much more? Will he give all things unto us? He sent his son, guys. Not so we could live on barely getting along straight. So that we could be sick and look just like the rest of the world and be like, yay, Jesus. No, the creator of everything sent he who is in and through everything to give us his name as authority to reveal the Father and his goodness so that it would draw all men because they could look at our life and think, what a kind and merciful and gracious God, that they would live above reproach, that they would have such kindness, love, and affection, that they would be free from evil in their body and in their soul and in their mind, that they would know the King so well that they want to love us that they would be bountiful, overflowing with blessings, that they're able to be a blessing on every occasion. Who are those people? Who is their God? I'm drawn to him. I want what they have. That's how we run our homes. That's how we run our lives. That's how we teach our kids to run our lives. That's really hard if you're sick and poor. That's really hard if you're sick and poor to operate in the gifts of healing. It's not impossible. I've seen sick people heal people because of faith. But that's not what he wants for you. That's not what he has for you. That's not what he sent his son to accomplish for you. He loves you. He's revealed his knowledge. How to separate yourself from the consequences of sin, which is death, destruction, and loss. How he's freed you from it being able to rule and reign in your life by empowering you through his spirit to be set free, and then to do the same for others. Hello. All right. So how's gifts of healing work? Have you ever been in a group of people and you get a strange twinge out of nowhere in your ear, in your head, in your hand, you know, your stomach, whatever, and you're just like, oh, that's weird. Instead of opening a conversation with the father, because human reasoning, all right, and no one had ever taught you. Well, I tell you 90% of the time, that is a, an attempt of the spirit to have you surrender and begin a conversation on if this is something someone is dealing with. Because God is bringing complete healing where you've come up short in faith or understanding, or knowledge, or wisdom, God is bringing supernatural by the gifts of healings, deliverance in this area. An example, uh, I'm just sitting there. All of a sudden, my left ear starts hurting. I don't have ear problems, right? Is somebody's ear hurting? And then I lean into the father. I'm like, what else? Oh, it's been hurting for a while. Father, what else? Where do it, remember, we practiced the last few weeks where you hear the voice of God and you just lean into him. Don't care about what people think. If no one says no, they said no. Start to practice. Practice being used by his spirit to show the world the love of the Father. Okay, what is that? Oh, I have an earache right now. Ah, well, the Lord just revealed it to me by his spirit. So through the gifts of healing and the will of the Holy Spirit, you're going to be healed right now when I lay my hands on you. What? Yes, that's God revealing himself in that situation to a child of God that's been baptized by fire, believes the gospel, has everything, including the name of Jesus, at their disposal. And the way the spirit works is he's going to use your physical body to help uh, bring your attention to something. And then you're able to supernaturally deliver the answer where they've come up short in faith, knowledge, wisdom, or unbelief. It's miraculous. And it should be happening more often than it is. Just nobody's teaching it. Not nobody. Few are teaching it. 
and especially not teaching it to our youth, our children. That one same spirit limited by age? Nonsense. Again, human reasoning. Not what he said. Okay, same one spirit, same endowments. Uh, uh, do I have a somebody? What do you got? Someone's been dealing with headaches in the back of their head. Right at the tip of their neck, bottom of their skull. Hey, God wants to heal that right now. You've been struggling with unbelief that it goes through your entire family. And so you've just been um, endowed with the human side of having to deal with it. No, no more. Receive that healing now in Jesus' name. That's the gifts of healing. Where the Holy Spirit comes and on the behalf of the Father reveals his goodness and takes care of that issue that has hung you up for too long. But you've just decided to put up with it. Or someone that you're in front of has. Where he uses these wonderful, miraculous endowments to get people the gospel. And then don't stop there. Do you know the Lord? Have you accepted him as king? Are there areas in your life where you've blocked him off? Have you been baptized? It doesn't take a pastor or evangelist. It takes a believer. And not so you can chalk it up or boast like you're so great. Oh, we're so great. We've got like 14 saved. And no, the Lord used me and brought in 14 that day by his spirit manifesting himself just because I got out of the way. You can do it too. See the difference? It's not us. It's the marvelous working of the Father revealing how he wants his sons to live, not hindered by sin, destruction, and loss, but made alive. Life abundantly flowing out of us like rivers and our kids and our spouses. Okay. Y'all look at me. at me. I can see it. I can see your eyes from here. Let me check in my class. <laughs> Let me see their eyes. <laughs> hey, hey. All right. How are we doing? How are we doing? You doing okay? All right. So what do we do with this? What do we do with this in our home? We need five truths to know when it comes to the gifts of healing. Remember, these are, this is the first from those that do something, which make up the nine endowments of the spirit or how he reveals himself working through us, his kids, okay? Every believer should always be healed and allow God to heal everyone through them. Now, does that mean that will always happen? We don't get to decide that. We don't get to decide the outcome. He told us to do it. He said these signs will follow. So I'm going to do it and allow him to determine the outcome. He said it's so. Too simple. That's how awesome he is. It seems too simple. We've got to work something out more. I have to conjure up something. I have to reveal something. No, I have to surrender my human reasoning. And where I would limit him. That's it. Teach my kids to do the same. Surrender. What's he saying? Something so simple as teaching them not to just rush forward and pray anything, but surrender the Holy Spirit and what he has to say. Look around as you're uh, going about your day. Is someone need something from the Spirit? When you get a tinge or twinge or a a feeling, check in with God who that's for, and then use your voice to check with others. A word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, stuff like that. You see things, you're like, what is that? Instead of just ignoring it, have a conversation with the Father. Let him guide you what to do with that until you're confident that it's him, and eventually you're able to just do it. Because now I don't have to check in. I recognize that from the last 10 times when I checked in and he confirmed, yeah, that's for someone else. Speak it out. Yes, that twinge is for someone in this room. See who it is. 
and you just practice, and it becomes normal life. And if he can write that to the most carnal church, well, guess what? We can surrender and allow him to work through us that way. Five truths. One, it's already paid for. It's done. It's complete. It's not coming. It's not eventually we'll be here. It's not we hope you get healed. No, it's done. We're calling for the manifestation of what is already complete in the kingdom of God by the blood of Christ and by faith in that blood. So you're not commanding God. You're not commanding Jesus. It's already done. Remember that word I told you earlier I would bring about? Sozo. It's a Greek word, 4982, to make whole, save, heal, and deliver. Did you know all the things that he has mandated us to do? He wrapped up in one word. Also, be saved, that word is sozo, healed, whole, and delivered. What's wholeness to you? Partly healed? Oh, once I lay down this body, no, why would he send the Holy Spirit to quicken your mortal body? Whole. And that's the God we want our kids to know. The true God and how he reveals himself. Number two. We don't have to ask God to heal. We don't have to ask him for permission. He's mandated us to. He's commissioned us to. We don't get to decide the outcome. We do what he's commissioned us to do. Heal the sick. Not ask me to heal the sick. Heal the sick. So what's number one? It's already been paid for. Number two, we don't have to ask Number three, you command the bodies to respond. What did Jesus do? Hands come forth. Get up and take your mat. Okay, he didn't spend the whole time casting out demons, though demonic source was often a part. He did what the Father said do. That was command them to do what they should be able to do because it's already been done. How about Peter at the, at the gate? What I do have, I give you a rise and walk. What? No travailing, no casting out. Okay. Now don't get me wrong. Jesus casts out demons. Paul casts out demons that sometimes is at play, but when it's time to heal, You command the body to do what it's supposed to do. Okay. Number four, there is not one tougher or one simpler sickness. Now, my spiritual father used to teach, you practice on headaches. Okay. But what he meant was, don't let a headache rule and reign you. You won't let anything else either. Don't let a headache or the flu season rule or reign your home. And nothing else will either. So he was saying, you know, don't wait for a day where you'll, you'll, you'll put up with everything, but you won't put up with diabetes. So now we're going to come in that. You don't know. Don't let anything come in that would dishonor the paid for work of our Lord. We're defending him. We're part of his body. So no sickness. No, you don't belong here. Body, get up. Every organ function properly. See the difference? Okay. None is greater or worse than the other. It's nothing to him. It's all under the curse which he delivered us from. Number five, there are no rules on how old you have to be to operate by the endowments of the Spirit. I know we hammer this, but I'm so tired of the body of Christ waiting to reach people till they're like 23 with real truth. Like we'll play chubby bunny and we'll read about Abraham, but we won't practice applying what it's like to live new creation living until you're older. You know, no. Practice now. Operate now in new creation reality. Learn how to surrender to the Holy Spirit, the same one spirit that's in me, is in you, my 13-year-old, my 9-year-old, my 5-year-old. Surrender to him. Allow him to work through you. Okay? No rules. So 
now you get to go and do. Don't leave this class just like, hey, learned all that great stuff. Take it as head knowledge and not put faith to it. What is faith? Faith without works is amp. So now you've heard it. The top five, I hope you got all five. If not, go back and listen to this afterwards. You need to know these things because you're a child of God sent to reveal the Father because Christ is no longer here. The only way he's here is through us. We reveal the goodness and the love of the Father. How? By his Spirit moving through us just like he did Christ Jesus, ministering the truth, setting the captives free, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed. Guys, it's our life, and it's fun. It's not hard. It's fun. It's enjoyable to be sons of the Creator. It's so fun. Don't take that away from your kids. Don't make it religious workings. I must attend a building one time a week. No, gather because you can't wait to see what God's going to do to increase how it is you hear his voice, how he utilizes you because you've learned to surrender a little more. You've been sharpened. You've gotten unbelief out of the way. You've renewed your mind in this area. No, be excited on how you're going to grow because you have gotten together with other members of the body of Christ. You've gathered to sharpen and stretch and strengthen. And you walk away like, woo, the people at work aren't ready for me. My family's not ready for what God revealed to me. And then do it in your living room. Join these classes at RootBible.com. They're free. And then take what you learn and walk it out. Don't let human reasoning limit you. Don't let it limit your kids. Don't let human reasoning stop what God has done. Don't let the cares of this world steal away the truth which he has spoken to you through this class today. Don't let it go. Hold on to it. Get in to 1 Corinthians. Get into Mark that we discussed. Find out what he's saying. Oh, there's no time. That's a lie. It's a lie. There's lots of time. It's just where you're allotting it where you're being intentional with it, where you're valuing it. Get into the word. Write it. A uh, big thing we push and pursue in Root Bible Reboot is write it on a card. Write this verse that we went over today on a card and keep it in your purse or your pocket and remind yourself, this is my commission as a child of God. So when I get a tinge or a twitch, when I see something that doesn't make sense, I'm going to continue that conversation because I know Mark 16, 15 through 18 is me. It's me. Write it on a card until it becomes truth to you. It is truth, but you putting faith in it is what makes it truth to you. When it becomes truth to you, it's your reality above and beyond what you naturally or the five senses would ever know. That's why renewing our mind is crucial to the word of God. Father, I thank you for everyone that's listening today. I pray that they be stirred up like no other by your spirit who dwells within them, who equips them, who strengthens them, who empowers them, who comforts them, guides them, who counsels them and, and is there, not wanting to be ignored but be consulted, to be leaned into, to be trusted. I pray that stirring up like never before to a week and a weekend beyond what they can imagine, where they're calling the things you lead them to call. So where they're utilizing the, the endowments, the tools of the spirit in their homes on a regular basis where 24 hours doesn't go by, that they're not being used by the spirit to tool someone else and reveal who you are, Father. I thank you that the body of Christ is waking up to who they really are. And not just those 23 and above, but entire households who know who they are and show those lost what's available to them by your power, by your strength, by your wisdom, by your knowledge. We lean wholly and fully on you, expecting the good things you say we have both for ourselves 
and to abundantly give to others like rivers. I thank you that everything they're coming up short for the holidays is no longer short, but in abundance. They are not coming up with less. They're coming up with more because they tithe, because they believe, because they give. They're not under Biden's economy. They are under yours, Lord. I thank you that as they tithe, they've tested you. And I thank you that they receive the windows of heaven opening up over them now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that your spirit's voice is louder than their own. And that they would have the confidence to respond when they hear instruction and guidance, even though it's beyond what they can reason. Let their homes be set ablaze by this very act of faith. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. All right, those that are on social media, I'm going over to my class now, and we're going to discuss if anyone has questions. We're going to try it out and see if the Lord is saying anything by his spirit. So if you've never joined a live class, remember rootbible.com. You go to the adult section and you join. Intentional Mamas is this class. Wednesday nights is the adult class. And then any other time it's youth, teen, or kids. It's been a joy joining with you. I thank you. And I'm going to go over to rootbible.com now where we'll continue the conversation. Have a super blessed day. Bye-bye.